Hello guys, good morning. Welcome to Utico Engineering Services, the house plan market. Last week, we discussed about form work for your deck, what you need to do, why you need a good carpenter, why you need to buy quality materials, and the importance of an engineer at the site. Today, I'll be looking at placement of reinforcement after the form work. What are the areas that are important to concentrate on? What we need to do and how we need to go about it. I just want to say thank you to my returning subscribers. God bless you. I hope you are benefiting from every activities you are uploading on this platform. If you are joining me for the first time, please do subscribe. Click on the notification bell. That way, whenever we upload new videos, you'll be the first person to be notified. If you are not interested in building construction you might as well skip subscribing but if you know you are in building construction industry or you are a home owner or you are planning to build in the future always try and follow or watch along every video that will upload because one way or the other you have something to learn from it like i said before my area of concern today is placement of reinforcement when we talk about reinforcement i mean how do we place our rods on the deck why do we even need to place rods on deck now, it is important for you to note that the deck, the formwork is always divided into smaller panels. We call it panels or partition. So, if you are placing your, your, your reinforcement, there's what we call the top and the bottom reinforcement. Or let me use the word, the main reinforcement and the secondary reinforcement. Okay? The main reinforcement, if you are placing it, try and make sure, definitely you are going to use your iron, a, a, a iron bender for it, to ensure that the iron bender place those main reinforcement along the shorter span. Okay, for example, if you have a partition or a panel, you have one side that is short and you have another side that is long. So that main reinforcement, if what is on the design is 12 mm, make sure it's going to run along the shorter span okay secondly if you are joining reinforcement together avoid joining those main reinforcements at the middle of the slab for example if you have a slab now and maybe you are placing reinforcement you discover that one is the one will not get to the end of the beam and it's going to get to the center of the, the the slab you wanted to connect another one to join it at the center before you go to the other end of the beam no don't don't do it that way because it's wrong if you do it that way the joining point there will, ha will be a weak zone and it will not be able to carry the load of the slab at the center point okay so that's the main reason then another thing again is your beam if you are connecting your beam this one is for iron benders if you are connecting your beams and your beam ensure that your beam is connected to from one pillar to the other or let me use the word from one column to the next column so that the beam can be transferring the load to the column don't extend your beam above the column because if you extend above the column that load that's supposed to be transferred to the column will be transferred to the wall okay then secondly 
for those of us that uh after after you finish connecting your primary reinforcement the next thing is to connect your your second reinforcement the second reinforcement you can use a lesser bar for example maybe 10 mm for the second and uh, or you can use the same size of rod still 12 mm then for this spacing of rod you can use 150 millimeter spacing for your members and 175 millimeter for your secondary bars or 200 but it is always advisable to work with what is in your structural design outside the spacing of bar another area i want to talk about is your uh, introduction of your your pillars your continuity columns most times you can introduce it into the beam or after the deck after the concrete deck but if you are introducing it after the concrete deck the problem or the challenge you are going to be having is that the lap length will not be sufficient enough from experience except if you know you want to introduce it after the concrete de deck then inform the iron bender to make sure they create adequate lap length so that after the concrete deck you still have enough lap length to connect with your colon okay so far so good after everything about the reinforcement the casting will take place right now if you watch very well we have already finished the casting work and and, and i believe i've discussed into details about casting process okay what they are doing right now is the form work and we've equally discussed about form work how to start your form work how to go about it the areas that you need to work on but if there's areas that you don't get clear in my discussion or there's area that you want me to throw more light on please feel free to comment below let me know the area just tell me your question what you need to know i i should be able to prepare a video regarding that area and upload it for you to understand if possible if i need to send it directly to you i will do that just to make sure you get the information clearly okay now for this particular building after the from work now we've gone up to we are moving our block work to lintel level and after the lintel level we'll be going towards the the roof level before i go into the roof level i want to discuss a little about some areas that are very very important to some of my clients when we start this construction work my client asked me of the plumbing if it's going to be conduit or if it's going to be surface so i want to talk a little about plumbing piping work and the electrical piping work although i will leave that analysis for the mechanical guys and the electrical guys to deliberate on in details but my advice to you homeowners is that if you are doing a piping work ensure that you use quality materials materials that when they when there's concrete on it is not going to break the pipe or destroy or change the form of the pipe okay now for the for the roofing once your work once our work gets to the to the roofing stage the next thing we are going to be looking at is the roofing beam most of the structures i've seen especially those ones done by artisans they don't always include the roofing beam and this for me is a very big issue for homeowners although the homeowners might not really see 
or know what is the implication but i think at this stage i have to take pains to start explaining the importance of a roof beam in construction activities one main reason why we need to introduce our roof beam is to help to carry the load from the roof to the columns now in a situation where you don't have your roof beam you are going to be having big challenges because all the roof load will be resting on the block okay now for this particular structure if you watch very well you discover that there are places that we've already done that our roof beam is going to follow okay you see those places that where the blocks are low the roof beam is going to follow through all those zones and connect to the parapet beam so that by the time they finish doing their roof you're going to be the roof beam is going to be connected to each of the pillars and at the end of the day none of your blocks will be carrying any roof load if you you if you did not introduce roof beam in your structures definitely you're going to be experiencing series of cracks on that particular block at the end of the day it might not be immediate but slowly surely those blocks are going to be experiencing sheer force forces that will be making them to act as if they want they want to crumble okay which is not too good for structure so this is the reason why you need to engage engineers in your work this particular structure if you watch very well we have started doing the roofing we have started installing the uh, roofing uh, sheet we've done all the skeleton work and the next phase we're looking at entering is the rendering the plastering after that we'll start doing the finishing work as you follow me gradually on this project i want to say a big thank you to all my viewers to those of you that have have patience to work with me up to this hour please like i said before if there's any reason you have questions that you want me to address or you have issues regarding your own as construction that you want me to throw more light on which area that has to do with your own construction please do not fail to drop your comments or your question on the comments section if i cannot reply directly i'm going to use a video okay to to exercise or explain that area we are looking at challenges in our building construction one good thing about us is that whatever thing we are doing on this platform we try to break it down in a way that the home owners can really appreciate it and understand it once again i say thank you and if you are not subscribed yet please remember to subscribe click on the notification bell and more importantly share this video so that those ones or those of us that need to gain from it this video can reach them and by so doing you don't know who you are going to be helping out so in my next activities i'll be looking at the rendering work although we are working on the security area now i don't think that is much of a focus for us but i'll be looking at maybe the rendering work or maybe something different completely i may be looking at cracks on building cracks on our building walls if it's convenient for me if i'm able to prepare the the arrangement everything i need to do on the cracks on our building work i'll try and upload it this week that we have now hopefully before before sunday this week and uh, i believe you are going to benefit from it thank you and god bless you